So, Seamilk, where are we going today? Well, since today's topic is about the overuse of antibiotics in China, I figure we go check out a little clinic because there's a lot of private clinics around, uh, around the country. Okay, very good topic. This is something that we can talk on with a little bit of authority because we've been living here for a long time. And, well, I'm married to a Chinese doctor as well, so we've got that little bit of inside information. So, Seamilk, tell me, what was your first thought when you went to a small clinic or a hospital here in China? What kind of shocked you the most? Well, I mean, pretty much everything. I gotta be honest with you, like a little clinic in the West, or at least in America, is just a little version of a hospital, really. Yeah. But here, there's a lot of specialists, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're educated in the field of doctorship, right? You get mm -hmm. a lot of situations where the doctors will only treat urinary infections, or only treat breast problems, or something like yeah. this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually just really a discount version of a good hospital. Um, right. I haven't seen any real nice clinics, and the cleanliness of these places always terrifies me because you have open air rooms where a lot of people are getting their treatments and everything's pretty filthy, the floors, and a surprising lack, lack of soap and disinfectants. And that, for me, was, was uh, enough to never go to one again, to be honest. What about you? Yeah, I mean, look, you get good and bad. Like, the clinic that my wife works at is new, so it's actually quite clean and fairly organized. But yes, in general, they're pretty nasty. But for me, when I was living in that red light district, you know, when I was kind of homeless here in China, my friend at the time, his girlfriend, Chinese, got, got sick. She got the flu or something, but like very minor, nothing bad, like a small fever or something. And he said he's taking her to the clinic. And I thought, okay, no problem. And I was horrified when she walked back into the house carrying one of those, you know, those like you see old sick people carrying around in the hospitals, those big like, <laughs> yeah. trolley things holding an IV drip, yep. right? And she was sitting there in the house with this IV drip. And, uh, you know, for us foreigners, usually it's only when something serious happens that you end up on an IV, right? Yeah. But I found out that this is the way they treat common colds, flu, etc. They set up these sort of IV drips with saline solution and either some kind of TCM or usually antibiotics. And it was antibiotics. And this is what they were doing to treat like a very mild fever. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was watching as like air bubbles were going into her arm and stuff. And I was like, look, this is, this is not okay. What's going on here? But it turns out it's just the norm. And if you go to any of these small clinics, you'll usually see lots of old people, children, everybody just sitting there with an IV drip. And uh, that kind of leads us on to this abuse of antibiotics, and I think you should start with that. Well, to be honest, if, if we're going to cover this properly, we should go into why this actually happened. And as you all know, Winston mentioned a word, TCM, which means traditional Chinese medicine. And while the rest of the world has kind of moved on with Western medicine and the use, proper use of antibiotics and, and medicine to treat certain ailments, China has had this bizarre mixture of following old traditional medicine uh, techniques through use of herbs and uh, balancing of qi and things like this. Whereas um, when Western medicine came here, it was kind of frowned upon. People were like, oh, I don't know about this Western stuff. I don't really trust it. We've been doing this for thousands of years. And so when actual hospitals saw that it worked for certain things, especially the treatment of infections and stuff, they overused it. And it kind of led to the abuse of Western medicine. So when you get prescribed a headache pill from the doctor's office, they're using thousands of milligrams of ibuprofen instead of, you know, a normal amount that you would use to treat a headache. It's overdone. It's overused. And what happened was when people got infections or sick, they saw that antibiotics were working. They were getting rid of the infection. They were making people healthy again. But they were using it for everything from, like you said, the common cold all the way to a bacterial infection on their leg, all the way to, to uh, aches and pains and normal, treat, uh, normal things that you can treat at home. So antibiotics, they had no idea that antibiotic resistance was going to come out of that. And since they were prescribed for everything, and I mean everything. Yeah, everything. Everyone was taking them, and now it is creating a huge, huge problem with superbugs and antibiotic resistance in this country. Sure. I mean, it's not just that. All the livestock, of course, is also completely pumped up with antibiotics and stuff, too. I think that's kind of a worldwide issue, yeah. really. But right. yes... It was a cure-all, and they're like, wow, this really works. So, hey, you got any kind of problem, just take antibiotics. And it's basically become ingrained. It's, it's terrible. Like, I'm... <laughs> Look, first of all, TCM, I'm not going to discount TCM because some of it does work, and I've seen it work with my own eyes. There is definitely some merit to certain types of TCM. Not all of it. There's a lot of superstitious, traditional nonsense which doesn't work at all. 
but there are certain types of TCM that actually work. Anyway, this whole like cure-all with antibiotics is bad. I've actually, you know, my, I told you, well, I keep saying my wife's a doctor, everybody knows her by now, but like she is a doctor and she herself would be taking antibiotics just because she has a very minor like case of the flu or like a fever, you know, because she doesn't want to miss out on work or something, so she'll just pump up on the antibiotics. And I don't think people here realize just how bad it is for you, how dangerous it is, you know? So what do you what do you think is going to happen, man? I mean, it's not even speculation at this point. Western scientists are, you know, publishing articles all the time about the dangers of the superbugs that will come out of China because of the overuse of antibiotics. And it could be an, epi an epidemic of massive proportions. It could be akin to something like the Black Plague, because when you have an entire secluded country of 1.5, 1.3 billion people or whatever that have been taking antibiotics their entire life and an outbreak happens, something like Ebola or something really scary like SARS or something, these viruses and these bacteria, these bugs, have, have gained basically superhuman strength. They, they can withstand any sort of treatment. So now if you do treat things with antibiotics, even here in China, if you have an infection, they will give you triple or quadruple the dose. And it's terrifying because what happens when all of the, the bacteria are resistant to that, right? Sure. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's scary. It's not tinfoil hat stuff. It's actually just science. And it's very terrifying because nobody, nobody seems to understand that here. Yes, it's unfortunate. That seems to be the, I'd say China in a nutshell really is just use up a resource until it's no longer viable and then move on. Good point. And I think it's the same with medicine. So sure. use, use up antibiotics until they no longer work and then find something new. At least that's the idea. Sure. However, I'm going to just uh, tell you that it wasn't very long ago I read in the, in the news that there is already a pretty bad strain of antibiotic resistant uh, flu or something that cropped up somewhere in China which they weren't able to treat. Whoa. So we should look that up, maybe uh, put, yeah. paste a link down here. Sure. Um, so anyway, we are not trying to be scaremongers here. That's not the point of our channel. Our channel here, our Churchill channel, is to explain the difference between China and the West, at least at the moment. And this is a big difference, and that is that people here love antibiotics, they love using antibiotics, and they believe it's a cure-all for any ailment, really. Mm -hmm. So, yes, if you're here in China and you have some kind of an ailment, just be careful and uh, make sure the doctors aren't over prescribing you with antibiotics really yeah for sure just to wrap this up for me like a personal experience was a couple years ago when i broke my knee um it didn't break the skin it was just my bone and yeah. the first thing the doctor said was like well there's not much we can do we can put you in a cast but you're gonna need to have motion in your knee so just take these and of course i open the bag and there's antibiotics in there and it's just like are you kidding me yeah, so, yeah. Um, ex exactly the same when I, I've said this, I said this in our hospital thing when I went to go test that clinic and they prescribed me with uh, antibiotics that I was actually allergic to. Yeah. And it was because I came in complain complaining that I had a uh, sprained ankle or perhaps broken ankle and I got sure. antibiotics for that, which is not something I would usually expect. No. So, <laughs> yes, antibiotics are way over prescribed here and uh, we'll just have to see how it turns out. Let's hope for the best. Um, maybe the Chinese scientists are going to invent something that's more powerful than an antibiotic. I like the, the power of your positive thinking there, Winston. Yeah, you got to be positive, man, otherwise the world just seems like a gloomy place. Yep. <laughs> right, guys, so that's pretty much the end of our episode. Now, we don't want to leave it on a sour note. Um, I know it's a pretty negative topic, but you know, Seamilk's a big skeptic, he doesn't really believe in TCM, but I am going to say that I've had a couple of cases in my life where TCM has actually worked. I'm going to give you two examples, okay? First time was when I was still quite new in China, and I was teaching kindergarten. And uh, while I was teaching kindergarten, I picked up a viral whooping cough from the children mm -hmm. because you know you're you're exposed to different strains of virus and bacteria in China that you just don't get overseas mm -hmm. so I was literally coughing non-stop for about three weeks and Kay. I was coughing so much I was vomiting that's how bad it was I was just cough 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 it was disgusting and I tried all the usual stuff you know went down to the the, the normal sort of Western pharmacy and got cough medicine and all the usual thing nothing uh -huh. worked right and then um, a Chinese friend of mine said hey listen Come down here, try this uh, herbal, like, Chinese tea. Okay. Okay, and it's at one of those medicinal tea shops. 
and it was disgusting i don't know what's in it but it tasted so bitter just the tea itself made me want to throw up mm -hmm. it's so disgusting that they give you like a dried orange peel or something afterwards to take away the taste okay uh anyway drank one in the morning one in the evening for three days and the cough went away okay and like that to me was proof that that worked there was obviously something in there that really just counted whatever it was that i had so who knows i don't want to turn this into a churchill debate channel so i'm not gonna say anything <laughs> could, could have been the power of positive thinking yeah, i think that's um, what it was guys anyway whatever whatever the case that worked second story okay and you're not gonna like this one um when my parents came to visit me the first time here uh i got incredibly sick it was like the second day they were here i went out drinking with some friends and then i just got like this this terrible fever okay raging fever aching bones all that kind of thing and i was like you know what i can't have a bloody fever when my parents are here i got to show them around and stuff so sure. again i asked a friend of mine and he took me to one of these places to get that cupping you know the bao ho guan mm -hmm. and it was the most painful experience in my life because when you've got the flu and your go left. you know your skin really hurts and stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your go left i'll go left okay and you know your joints are aching and all that kind of crap right yeah um and they suck those suction cup things used as a vacuum they use fire and stuff and they were scraping it around and in fact i've got a picture here you can see what my back looked like afterwards beautiful and uh it was excruciatingly painful and the next day the fever broke now i don't know what caused that maybe it was the shock to my system of having so much bloody pain but whatever it is that made it work like literally i got a fever one day got that next day the fever broke so for me it worked you know well, proofs in the pudding that's, that's proofs in the pudding i love your anecdotal evidence that's fantastic this is very scientific <laughs> research here and before we continue this conversation i'm going to say thank you guys for staying healthy and thank you for liking commenting and subscribing yep and whether you believe in tcm or not whether you do like comment or subscribe as always guys don't forget kind of like that statue dude over there yeah stay awesome hey.